WW2 Bayside probably would not be much of an exaggeration to say that Adolf Hitler, the leader of Nazi Germany, ranked high among the most evil men in the entire history of mankind. His personal ambition, fueled by extreme racial hatred and a deranged vision, led directly to the European War and the series of atrocities later known as the Holocaust. WW2 Basie Hitler was born in Braunau Inn in Austria-Hungary to Alois Hitler, the customs official, and Clara Polzel, Alois' distant cousin. The traditional spelling of his family name was Heiler. As in Johann Georg Heiler, the stepfather of Alois. The spelling change was likely a mistake by the staff of the local priest responsible for birth registries. At age 16, Hitler dropped out of school after the death of Alois to pursue a career in art. The Academy of the Arts in Vienna, however, did not believe that he was as talented as he thought he was, and rejected his application twice. He continued to paint for merchants and tourists and lived the life of a poor artist. In 1907, his mother passed away from breast cancer. She was treated unsuccessfully by Dr. Edward Block, who was Jewish by faith. Hitler's relationship with his mother was a loving one. He had rebelled against his father ever since he was about the age of 10 or so, describing him as a strict disciplinarian, even though evidence suggested that he was no more strict than the norm at that time. Many sources also suggest that Hitler's interest in art stemmed many arguments with his father, who wanted him to become a civil servant like he was before his death. Hitler channeled all his affection toward his mother, and when she died of the painful cancer, he was filled with grief. He remembered deep in his heart that it was a Jewish doctor who failed to cure his mother. By 1909, he found himself in a homeless shelter and then a house for poor workers. He begged and shoveled snow for a living. WW2 Basa moved to Munich in 1913, which was declared by Austria-Hungary as a draft dodging. After being arrested and returned to Vienna, he was found unfit for military service. At the onset of WW1 in August 1914, however, Hitler enlisted in the 16th Bavarian Reserve Infantry Regiment of the German Army and became a messenger. He received the Iron Cross second class in December 1915 and first class in August 1918 for bravery in action. As a soldier, H.E. was aloof from comrades, zealous in his duty, and very lonely. Although born an Austrian, he became a German patriot and was deeply disturbed at the eventual defeat of Germany in WW1. In his mind, he was convinced that disharmony within Germany caused the disgraceful defeat. One group he blamed for the disharmony was the Communists. Witnessing a 1918 munitions workers strike, which he insisted was backed by communists, he exclaimed, W. Hat was the army fighting for it the homeland itself no longer wanted victory? He blamed Jews as well. It was around this time when his extreme anti-Semitism took shape in his mind. Fueled by his earlier studies of the writings of Lands von Liebenfels, Karl Luger, and Georg Ritter von Schonerer, WW2 Baseby the early 1920s, after being discharged from the Germany military, Hitler became active in politics. His rowdy yet emotion-stirring speeches slowly gathered a group of conservatives around him. His own poor and lonely background made him a great orator to his audiences. H.E. understands his subjects because they are so like himself, said W.H.D. Vernon. In 1921, he traveled to Berlin to meet with leaders of other nationalist groups in attempt to unify their efforts. During his visit in Berlin, disagreements broke out in the party. 
On the 29th of July 1921, he successfully maneuvered himself into the position of party leadership, gaining himself the infamous rank. Führer, as a result. He renamed his party to the National Socialist German Workers' Party, or, the Nazi Party. WW2 Base in November 1923, Hitler and the Nazi Party planned on a propaganda march through Munich to gather support for a coup against the local German government. He was arrested as a result. In prison, he dictated the book Mein Kampf to his deputy Rudolf Hess. The book expressed his twisted vision for Germany, blaming the Jews for all of Germany problems, and starting to develop a neo-nationalist ideal ruled by the superior Aryan race. When he was released from prison in 1925, he regained party leadership and spent the coming years establishing support for the Nazi party. In 1930, an economic depression hit Germany, and Hitler seized the opportunity to sell his party ideals to the public. The German people, unemployed and hungry, placed their trust in the Nazi party to return Germany to the position of the world power again. As a result, the September 1930 elections placed 107 Nazi members in the Reichstag, with the Nazi party suddenly becoming the second most powerful political party in Germany. The dangerous militarization of the German government began. In 1932, the Nazi party became the ruling party in the Reichstag, paving way for Hitler to become the chancellor in January 1933. In the next months, Hitler engaged in a series of schemes to rid his potential political rivals with the aid of the paramilitary organizations of SA and the SS, and later the Gestapo as well. On the 1st of August 1934, Hitler declared himself the absolute ruler of the German Third Reich in an act that was completely illegal according to the German constitution which stated that if a president should die while in office, his title and powers should pass, not to the chancellor, but to the president of the Supreme Court until election could be held. So, under the cover of popularist propaganda and construction projects such as the Autobahns, the felony of the German constitution Hitler began the systematic persecution of the German Jews. In 1935, Hitler publicly promoted the Nuremberg Laws, depriving German Jews of their citizenship. By 1938, the Nazi party openly urged hooligans to destroy Jewish-owned businesses and synagogues. WW2 Basie among one of the first items Hitler engaged upon was Germany's participation in the League of Nations. Specifically, his dislike of German participation. Beginning in March 1933, the League of Nations took up the question of firebombing, noting that it should be banned because the resulting fires was as uncontrollable as poison gas that the League of Nations had already outlawed. As the new resolution was about to be passed, Hitler announced Germany's exit from the League of Nations, throwing global politics upside down. The topic of firebombing was never passed into law, and even if it was, it would mean nothing without Germany's backing. Hitler walked away with pride that his Germany held so much power, but little did he know, his decision ensured the death of hundreds of thousands of his own countrymen as British and American aircraft would, ten years later, firebomb his cities. WW2 Basie's absolute ruler, Hitler also began to employ the foreign policy he had in mind to avenge the shame of the Versailles Treaty. He aligned himself with several ambitious rulers such as Benito Mussolini of Italy and Francisco Franco of Spain. His vision was to acquire Lebensraum, living space, for the German people in Eastern Europe. It began with the annexation of Austria then Czechoslovakia. During this time, he displayed utmost mastery in manipulating leaders of the Western Allies. 
His intuitive grasp of how far he could go with Allied leaders was uncanny. Commented William Manchester. It was not until after the invasion of Poland in September 1939 that Britain and France finally declared war on Germany. WW2 base while Hitler played an active role in international diplomacy and war planning. He exhibited a general lack of interest in German domestic politics. After the death of President Paul von Hindenburg, he rarely held cabinet meetings. In fact, he rarely visited the Chancellery in Berlin. When facing issues he did not care of resolve. He either forced different sides of an issue to resolve the issue before presenting it to him, or simply agreed with whoever presented the issue to rid himself of the work. Intentional or not, the latter created a system of government that could be described as institutional Darwinism. It was so labyrinthine and redundant that Nazi Germany resembled more like a collection of medieval fiefdoms rather than the highly organized machine that it presented itself as. WW2 Base in 1938, German fighter ace Adolf Galland met Adolf Hitler for the first time. Galland's first impression of Hitler was that Hitler was short, gray-faced and not very strong, a weak handshake, and he spoke with a crisp language. On 8 or the 9th of May 1940, his bodyguard Rockus Misch met him for the first time. Hitler left this impression on Misch, I had seen neither a monster nor a superman. The private individual Hitler was a normal, simple man, the simplest man I have ever knew. Only outside did he slip into his Fuhrer role. Only then did everything have to go according to protocol. WW2 Basie after WW2 broke out in Europe, Hitler's racial persecutions intensified. Between 1939 and 1945, an estimated minimum of 11 million people were systematically brought to concentration camps and murdered. No one could ever be sure of how many innocent Jews, Slavs, Gypsies, homosexuals, and political enemies of the Nazi party were killed in these concentration camps. Some estimates ran as high as 25 million. The Holocaust was a part of the final solution carried out by the Nazi party to establish a pure German nation. We shall regain our health only by eliminating the Jews, as Hitler said casually and heartlessly. To convince his followers, he justified this by claiming he was doing the work of God. I believe today I am acting in the sense of the Almighty Creator, he claimed in Mein Kampf. By warding off the Jews I am fighting for the Lord's work. While he openly expressed himself as a leader of a crusade of sorts. His actual attitude toward religion was rather unfavorable. Although originally baptized Catholic, he actually did not abide by any doctrines of Christianity. He picked and chose elements of Christianity as he saw fit to aid him in his persecution of Jews and to establish his political position. WW2 Basie antisemitism was not an uncommon thing in Europe at this time, for that the Christian majority had always looked down upon those of Jewish faith. It was especially prevalent in rural Catholic communities. However, by this time Hitler viewed the Jews as more than a mere group of annoyances commonly felt by the ignorant. He looked at the Jews, along with Slavs and other European minorities, as subhuman creatures. This twisted belief was later merged with his own suffering from syphilis, rumored to have acquired during a rendezvous with a prostitute in Vienna who might possibly have been Jewish which led him to strangely associate the Jewish faith with diseases. Out of the feeling that he was not able to save her mother from breast cancer, he felt that he must act as Germany's savior and rid the nation of its suffering. WW2 Bayseto achieved this, 
Hitler obsessed with maintaining pure blood in German people. Like most of Hitler's artwork. This was not an original concept by him. Rather, it was plagiarized by earlier writers such as Houston Stuart Chamberlain. He eventually became so obsessive with this concept that he had ordered to set up facilities where the supposedly superior Aryans were sent to mate. While he believed that it would maintain the pure blood of a superior race, ironically this practice also treated the blonde-haired and blue-eyed Aryans like animals on breeding grounds. WW2 Basie Hitler's complete disregard for humanity, then, made his complete lack of integrity so much expected. The September 1939 invasion of Poland was committed while the peace treaty between Germany and Poland was still in place. Then in June 1941, Hitler tore up the non-aggression pact that his government had signed with Russia only a few years before, and launched Operation Barbarossa into Russia. Throughout his career as the leader of Germany, he again and again turned on those who helped him to the top, purging them out of positions of power to prevent them from challenging his position. WW2 base so many believed Hitler was one quarter Jewish or Czechoslovakian Slav. Many studies also found suppressed homosexual tendencies in Hitler. The strongest evidence came from his close working relationship with the early Nazi party founders such as Ernst Röhm, who were homosexuals. Röhm, in fact, was a man who Hitler addressed with the affectionate German pronoun DU. A practice he did not continue with anyone else after Rome's death in 1934. His interest in the opposite sex also was rather intriguing. Although he had many female companions, he was never married. His earlier relationships showed signs of a perverse sexual nature. Especially illustrated with his relationship with his niece, Gilly, who was either killed, purposefully or otherwise, by Hitler in the heat of passion, or was sexually abused so harshly that she committed suicide. These theories, though none ever proven completely, painted a picture of Hitler that, if true, seemed to explain the Holocaust as a twisted extension of his own unbalanced psyche. WW2 Basie another interesting observation on Hitler, which perhaps could also be described as rather unbalanced, was his hatred for Berlin as a city. He disliked Berlin the first time he stepped on its grounds. In 1928, he denounced the city as a melting pot of everything that is evil, prostitutes, drinking houses, cinemas, Marxism, Jews, strippers, dancing, and all the vile offshoots of so-called modern art. This was not difficult to understand. Where Paris used to be known as the Sin City, Berlin had now taken over the title. Prostitution was rampant, some even featured young teenage girls. Gay bars opened up one after another. Visited by financial executives and ordinary citizens alike, with the influx of Hollywood films, gangsters like Al Capone and Lucky Luciano became role models. It was not hard to see why Hitler, who believed in the purity of the German people and culture, hated Berlin. Throughout his entire reign, he never stayed in Berlin longer than what he had to, preferring to remain in his remote headquarters such as Wolf's Chance, the Wolf's Lair in Rassenburg, East Prussia or aboard special armored trains such as America. Perhaps the previously mentioned Marxist-backed munitions workers strike Hitler witnessed in 1918 had much to do with it, too. Berlin had, despite the Nazi regime, a strong liberal mentality that could never be taken away from its citizens. <laughs>